A new year means it's time for a new setup, except that it's not entirely new, it's more like just refreshed. I think that makes sense, so let's go with that. I've been needing a few changes and upgrades for a little while now, and I finally pulled the trigger and implemented some of those because I've had the time to do it over the last little while. And one of the main things that I changed here that's the most obvious is that I've gone back to a dual monitor setup. But this time, the second monitor is set up in a vertical orientation. And it's working out really well coupled with the ultra wide. For video production, managing YouTube, and other projects, this kind of a setup has a lot of advantages. You can see so much more of a web page all at once without having to do all kinds of scrolling. And that also works for having all kinds of YouTube analytics up here and other stuff like um, trading or keeping an eye on stocks or coding and programming and even just writing a whole bunch of endless text. A big advantage of going vertical with the second screen for me is just because my setup is gigantic. Like my computer's big. This is a 35 inch monitor and this one's a 27 inch. If I were to take this 27 inch, the second screen and set it up in the traditional way horizontally and start right here at the edge of my 35 inch ultra wide, that's gonna put the other edge of the monitor past where I'm looking at the camera right now. It would probably be, yeah, outside the field of view of the camera. So if I'm looking ahead and working on a video project or whatever, and I gotta look at some files or something on this screen, I gotta do this. That's like straining my neck. I'm gonna get some kind of repetitive strain injury. It's ridiculous. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's definitely not a comfortable and easy way to work. So when you've got it in the vertical way like this, I'm looking ahead doing my project or whatever I'm working on, I can easily just glance over like this. That's the extent of how much I have to move my head. And seriously, that might not look like a big deal on camera while you're watching me right now, but it's so much more comfortable and convenient to work this way. To get all this to really work the way that I wanted with the limited space that I have over here at the edge of my desk, I ended up mounting this screen on an aftermarket arm and it's just a cheap one that I picked up on Amazon, but it worked out really well. It has no problem at all holding this 27 inch screen and I'll link it for you down in the description if you want to check it out along with all this other stuff that we're talking about as well. The monitor that I ended up going with is made by LG. Like I said, it's 27 inches and it uses an IPS panel. So the viewing angles are pretty good. They're not the best for an IPS panel, but they're not bad. It makes it a decent second screen. It's 4K resolution and the refresh rate is only 60 Hertz. So I probably wouldn't use this as a main display. I like a little bit higher refresh rate than that, but for a second display, you really can't beat it for the price. The main monitor is the BenQ EX3501R. I've had it for a while now, I think like two years and I still love it. The resolution's 34, 40 by 1440 and the refresh rates 100 Hertz. I'll probably hang on to it for a little while longer, at least until they start making ultra wides with higher pixel densities. If you're somebody that's been watching this channel for a while, then you know that I've had my main hardware mounted to an open air frame instead of an enclosed case, but I recently made the decision to switch over to the Be Quiet Silent Base 802. It's a really good case in terms of build quality, design, and airflow, but the main reason I made the switch is the drive capacity. The open air case looked amazing and really showed off all the hardware, but it wasn't practical for a video production system because it was just so limited in terms of storage options. This one, on the other hand, has tons of room for drives. Right now, I've got three four terabyte drives installed inside the main area in drive cages, and then underneath the power supply shroud, there's two more. And there's actually room to add more as I need to. Other than that, most of the system specs are gonna remain unchanged, at least just for the time being. I'm still running a 16 core Ryzen 9 3950X with 3600 megahertz G-Skill Trident Z RAM and an Asus X570 ROG Strix motherboard. The CPU cooler is the NZXT X73 360mm AIO. The power supply is the Be Quiet Straight Power 11 850W Platinum. And there's a 250GB NVMe SSD just for the operating system, a 1TB NVMe SSD for video production, a 1TB SATA SSD for programs, and a 2TB SATA SSD for games. Unfortunately for the video card, we're all gonna have to use our imaginations a little bit because that is supposed to be an RTX 3080, but you know how that goes. I can't find one of those anywhere and I've been looking every day for supply or for stock online ever since they launched, which has been a while now, and I just can't find them anywhere. So for now, I'm gonna have to continue using my GTX 1080 Ti, which is really getting pretty old and can use an upgrade. So unfortunately, that's just the way that it is. The launch of these latest NVIDIA RTX cards is brutal. There's no stock anywhere, and I probably shouldn't complain too much because I'm sure a lot of you are in the same position. My gaming mouse is still the Razer Viper Ultimate, and it's still amazing, and I highly recommend it, but only if you don't mind spending a lot of money on a mouse because it is expensive. 
I recently switched out my HyperX Alloy Elite 2 keyboard for the Rocket Vulcan 121 AMO. The low profile design and tactile feel of these switches really grew on me after a while, which I wasn't really expecting. And it's got the multimedia controls and the full layout with the number keypad, which is a must for me. This massive mouse pad is the MSI GD70 that I actually recently reviewed on the channel. Um, I wasn't expecting to use it super long term, mostly just because I didn't like this gigantic dragon logo that it has, but the performance of it and just the feel of this surface is actually amazing. So I'm gonna keep using it at least for the next little while and we'll see how it goes. This is a DaVinci Resolve speed editor and it's a specialized control panel specifically made for video editing. I use it for larger projects where I really have to cut through a lot of different video clips. It can help save time doing that. And it's also really good for switching between different cameras in a multi-camera sequence or a timeline. So yeah, I definitely use this to help save some time on the larger projects. And I'm still using these Sennheiser open back headphones. They're just so lightweight and comfortable and the sound quality is absolutely amazing. I said this in the review like two years ago or more whenever I reviewed these and that still holds true today by far. None of the gaming headsets that I've ever reviewed on this channel come close to the performance and sound quality of these headphones. And because of that, I haven't put them down ever since I tried them. And they're starting to get pretty banged up and worn out because they're old. I've dropped them a million times, but they're still holding up. But still, I think it's time for an upgrade or a replacement. So I'll have to see what comes along in 2021. So that's my refresh setup for 2021. Well, at least going into 2021, I'm sure it's gonna change and evolve as the year goes on as it always does. But for now, that's what I've got. And and that's what I'm gonna be using. But more importantly, I wanna hear about your setup. So leave a comment below and tell me all the details about it. And if you use Instagram, make a post to your setup and tag my account at eCPUs with a Z on the end so I can check it out too. And if you're new here and you're not yet subscribed, click the red button and also turn on notifications so you don't miss any upcoming videos. 2021's looking like it's gonna be a pretty fun year on the channel. I've got a lot of stuff planned. So we'll see you soon.